Hello, I'm an anti, and this is something between a dramatic reading and a debunk. It's easy to see the harm perpetuated by calling Brianna a gold-digging whore or Eleanor a fame-hungry beard. We can all see the misogyny and roundly condemn it. But though I've created one video about the homophobia inherent in Larry belief, that's harder for people to accept as part and parcel of this conspiracy theory. A new post has come up that requires reading and dissection, and there are two parts here to this. Damaging homophobic stereotypes, and also by erasure. And all of this is couched in a facade of activism. I've decided to read this post in pieces, debunking and explaining the problems as I go, instead of taking on the whole thing at the end. At the reading of this, the post had 598 notes in about 24 hours. So much discourse about forcing a sexuality lately, which can only mean that Harry Styles' straight, no-label defenders are really feeling threatened by his gayness. This rant has been sitting in my drafts for two years, and there are still people in denial. It kills me. I guess his dragging a man on stage to dance with was the last straw. There's no proof that Harry is gay. Don't label him. It's none of our business. That's wrong, you say. Ugh. How is this still a conversation we're having? Proof is a scientific term based on observable, empirical, objectively collected evidence. It is therefore irrelevant to something as personal as desire. Yes. How about you, random conspiracy theorist who fancies herself a fan? How about you tell us what Harry desires? Using what? Let's talk logic, not proof. I can't prove Harry is gay, but thanks to logic, I don't need to. You want to use logic? Yes, let's use logic. Let's not only use logic, but let's not ignore logical fallacies. Let's not pretend that the foundation of your argument is not a false premise. And so your house of cards that you call logic is paper thin, with hurricane force winds bearing down on it. Using logic is paying attention when he consistently alters pronouns in responses to questions to make the answer ambiguous, gender neutral, or outright male. Someone who's nice, maybe send him a flower. It's observing his adamant and vocal tendency to flirt with men only in the audience and call them a hunk, sexy, silver fox, and beefcake. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist is cherry picking. It's ignoring all of Harry's words about dating women, his songs about relationships with women. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist is by erasure. It's acknowledging his explosive and colorful support of LGBT rights and representation, wearing rainbows, carrying rainbows, tweeting rainbows, excitedly declaring his support for gay marriage, and the entire U.S. leg of his recent tour wherein he made frequent use of rainbow flags and feather boas, even bringing his own to counter the notion that the crowd was forcing it on him. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist is misrepresenting events to make them fit your narrative. In Nashville, Harry acquired a fan's flag that was confiscated at the door since the venue was not allowing flags or signs. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist is engaging in false dichotomy. What other possible reasons could be out there for Harry to wave the rainbow flag? The bi flag? The trans flag? Can you honestly think of None, little conspiracy theorist, that doesn't involve assigning him a sexuality he's not claimed for himself? None? I weep. He has said, in response to having crushes on girls, no, never, never again. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist requires that you erase context. Here, watch this clip for yourself. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, Harry was sincerely coming out to literal children. So were then the rest of the band. He has said, in response to publicly labeling his sexuality, No, I don't feel the need to, really, no. He said nothing whatsoever about being against labels. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist requires that you ignore the actual words of the man in question and change the quote as well as its intent. 
Here's the full quote. I asked Harry about sexuality and pop, a topic in the headlines after Miley Cyrus spoke openly about her pansexuality. What's his take? He says, Being in a creative field, it's important to be progressive. People doing stuff like that is great. It's weird for me. Everyone should just be who they want to be. It's tough to justify somebody having to answer to someone else about stuff like that. So has Harry personally labeled his sexuality? He replies, No, I've never felt the need to really. No. Would he like to elaborate? I don't feel like it's something I've ever felt like I have to explain about myself. Valeri, in response to publicly labeling his sexuality, the actual question, has Harry personally labeled his sexuality? Personally, not publicly. He has said, with regard to sex with men, don't knock it till you try it. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist means taking yet another interview out of context. Here, you can watch for yourself as five guys joke around with an interviewer who is also joking around. You have to ask about girls. You two are uh, still you single. Too. Yeah. Still on the scene. Keeping it real, the dream, the dream, the dream team. <laughs> any, any desire for a more serious lady in your life? No, I've never said it for comedy. Any, any headline? No, I was not managing to control it. Flat, flat any, any desire yeah. for <laughs> Every new promo trip, we say that now I slept with a different. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you remember, like a different celebrity? Oh, yeah. Last time it was uh, like Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae Jepsen. Have we ever even met? We need to go sports person. Do we? Serena Williams. Do Rihanna. No, no, no. I need. I'd love that one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get back to you. Who now? Who now? I think we need to go outside the box. A man. You know, a man. Let's go, a man. <laughs> Top court man. Can't Top either. court man. I don't like it too dry. <laughs> Notice that the topic of conversation was all of the people they were linked to that they'd not slept with. He flirts with men. He compliments men. He invites men to dance with him on stage, grab a partner, and dance away. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist apparently means sexualizing human interactions that are not inherently sexual. It was extremely surreal to me to enter the fandom in 2014 upon Harry declaring that femaleness is not that important in his dating life, the equivalent of coming out, having the media explode, and then literally two months later go back to LOL, Harry the Womanizer, LOL, he's such a playboy, LOL, and so-called fans calling him straight. I was like, wait a minute, what? This guy loves dudes. Do we all have some sort of collective amnesia? Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist consists of ignoring the context of the interview that apparently dragged you into the conspiracy theory. It needs no explanation. The interviewer asks Liam and Harry what they look for in a lady. A lady, not a significant other, not a person. And Liam responds, female. The interviewer pulls a face and Harry makes fun of Liam for his answer. Here, watch for yourself. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Ria says your favourite traits that you look for in a lady. Four favourite traits. Female. <clears throat> it's a good trait. <laughs> Not that important. <laughs> um, I would say... <laughs> sense of humour. And, like, natural. Yeah. Not, you know... Not, yeah. I'm looking for four. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very large personality. <laughs> Love that little tiny pause. Um, it's a quick one for you, you got Someone, someone you got who's nice. Yeah. You know? Like oh, he's gone nice now. He's gone nice now. He's stopped with the jokes. <laughs> You're not going to go out with a dickhead, are you? Four things yeah. that you think. And Harry, in his final response, yes. He says someone, notably after he responds flat out to the question of what he looks for in a lady. And this still doesn't mean he's coming out as gay. Because, little Larry, you're forgetting, or deliberately erasing, one or the other. Something called bisexuality. It's easy to believe that all homophobes are gross old white men against gay marriage, but it's just as gross for a fangirl to see someone give as many hints as Harry has. God, they're not even hints, they're fucking statements! And completely ignore them to the point of defending his sexuality. Like, if you want to cling to some distant hope that he likes women, if that's what gets you up in the morning, then be my guest, but to steamroller over everything he does by calling it a joke? Nuh-uh. Not my kind of pal. 
You are a homophobe. It was a joke, conspiracy theorist. He laughed. The interviewer laughed. He wasn't coming out. Let's look at his actual statement he made about his sexuality again, all right? So has Harry personally labeled his sexuality? He replies, no, I've never felt the need to really, no. Would he like to elaborate? I don't feel like it's something I've ever felt like I have to explain about myself. That's a statement. That's what his words are on this matter. Not these hints that you've concocted, that you see with your maladaptive eye and call activism. You call us homophobes for repeating Harry's words, for refusing to twist them to fit a fictional narrative? What is my proof? In mathematical terms, it doesn't exist. Sexuality is not something you can measure on a graph. But in observing his words and actions, the only logical conclusion is that Harry likes men a hell of a lot. Probably even exclusively. Probably even exclusively. Using logic means, when you're a conspiracy theorist, cherry-picking. It means ignoring every instance of Harry confirming that he's had relationships with women. It means ignoring all of his songs that reference relationships with women. It ignores Kendall Jenner on the yacht. It ignores Camille Rowe at his concerts. It ignores Taylor Swift in person and immortalized on his debut solo album. It means, at the very least... By erasure. It's inconvenient for your conspiracy theory, isn't it? That bisexuality is something that exists, that is something you have to completely ignore in order to use logic to show that your conspiracy theory is plausible? Merely stating that yours is the only logical conclusion doesn't make it so. Do you realize how ridiculous it sounds to claim he hasn't told us his sexuality? It's like having your friend say, My, my, I got soaked on the way here and putting a wet umbrella in the hallway. Then when someone asks if it's raining, you turn around and say, How do I know if it's raining? They haven't said so! Harry's putting wet umbrellas in the hallway. Lots of them. Using logic when you're a conspiracy theorist apparently means misconstruing the definition of the word to tell and confusing it with Nancy Grace's explanation of circumstantial evidence. You know what Harry has told us? Here, let me quote his words again. So has Harry personally labeled his sexuality? He replies, no, I've never felt the need to really, no. Would he like to elaborate? I don't feel like it's something I've ever felt like I have to explain about myself. Again, that's what he's told us. He hasn't said he's gay. No, you've cast that upon him. Logic, people. Proof is mathematical, but logic doesn't have to be. Logic dictates that Harry likes dick either some or all of the time. If you insist otherwise, you are not defending him or being a good fan. You are actively erasing what he has said and done to the contrary, which makes you an oppressive asshole. Logic dictates, little conspiracy theorist, that we should take Harry at his word, that he has never felt the need to personally label his sexuality and hasn't felt like he has to explain it. Morality dictates, little conspiracy theorist, that when someone expresses this, you should not then conclude that he likes dick either some or all of the time. But that's typical Larry thought process there, going for the graphic sexual description whenever they can. The irony of that last bit, you, little Larry, have actively erased what Harry has said and twisted and misconstrued the rest. That makes you the oppressive asshole.